Alright, welcome back to our channel. Thanks for sticking with us. Today we got a couple of different things going on. We are working on the Aston Martin, of course. We always do that. We are going to have this car running today if it kills us. And assuming we get it running, Antonio's gonna go around and do the brake pads all the way around on all four wheels. We wanna make sure those are nice and fresh for the new owner. As far as brakes go, I also have to do brakes on my 2012 SL63 AMG. I absolutely love this car. Uh, it was the cheapest SL63 in the nation when I bought it a year ago. And of course, it came with problems, a lot of problems, but we got those fixed and sorted. When you buy a car from the auction, the dealer auction, um, you know, not all auction cars are bad, but all of the bad cars are at the auction, and that's a guarantee. And this one had, well, about $6,000 worth of different modules that we had to put in it, but we had it all sorted in about two days. My guys here are fantastic with that. And I have driven this car problem-free for almost a year. Uh, it's got 80,000 miles on it. I've put about 10,000 on it. And it hasn't given me any issues at all, but it is completely and totally impractical. Absolutely can't fit anything in the trunk. Uh, my seven-year-old daughter rides in it with me. She can barely fit her backpack on her lap. So I've decided to put this car up for sale. These cars in perfect condition go anywhere from 50 to $80,000. This one has a sorted history. It was a Lemon Law buyback at 1,000 miles, and it was rear-ended and salvaged at 35,000 miles. But that's all been fixed. The car is in fantastic shape. It does show signs of wear, cracking on the carbon fiber. Red leather seats are a little worn on this bottom, but it's a fun, fun, fun 500 and some odd horsepower car. So whoever buys it is getting a lot of car for the money. They can kick the crap out of it and not have to feel guilty because I've already done it for them. All right, so we've got an issue with the starting of the car. It was running until we changed the engine cradle and now every time we push the start button, it just blows the fuse. So Antonio's gonna dig in, he's gonna check the wiring from the starter to the fuse box, and then we'll also test the starter too if necessary. It's kind of difficult because literally as soon as you push the button, it, it blows the fuse. So he's gonna dig into that. I'm gonna eat some breakfast and that's what we're gonna do today. Yeah. So have fun, Antonio. <laughs> Thank you. If you need any heavy lifting, call someone else. Perfect. Uh, but I'm right here for advice. All right. So having a drunken conversation at a party those are usually the best ones. You know, you have those moments of realizations when you're having too much fun. Yeah. And I think I think we either pinched a wire or damaged the ground. Okay. Well, well, I guess that's the same thing. It's gonna be what happened. <laughs> <laughs> so. And with a car that's tight, I mean, how do you even get in there? Well, and that's that's kind of the thing that we've been. Kind of battling is we can't see and everything was okay until we put this new motor mount in should we put uh should we support the engine and drop the cradle down to open it up for you to look or is that kind of not not at that point yet i don't think we're at that point yet and i think we're gonna be okay with not moving much of the cradle okay um the manifold's gonna have to come out. I think the manifold's gonna come ah, out, like ah, Steve said. Fuck. Okay. So taking a manifold off in this car is like pulling wisdom teeth. Yeah, it's just, <laughs> it's I think wisdom kind of teeth are a little easier. Yeah. <laughs> Doing it to yourself. I decided on the grill. We are going carbon fiber on the grill. Okay. I mean, right. I, I, uh, we need this piece for over here, and whatever goes in the middle to support. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I can't uh, take any more money out of the shop to put in this car, so I'm going to be selling some of my personal cars, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. Okay. I'm getting a lot of heat uh, from my friends over selling the Corvette. I mean, it's... But to be honest, like, I love the car, but I haven't driven it, but I haven't driven it five to seven years other than around the block. Uh -oh. I mean, it just sits in my garage. 
And like, I mean, somebody should buy it and enjoy it, take it to car shows and do stuff like that. So if you need a Corvette, call me. It's pretty useless though, it doesn't have a roof. And for anybody watching that's being critical, yes, we know that fuse box is not supposed to be hanging there like that, but we're in the assembly process, so we're just doing testing at this point. It will be mounted properly when we're done. Oh my fucking God. What? Hi. Another fucking loose terminal. Well, that's another five dollars in the jar. Oh yeah, your 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 f bombs are gonna pay for the rest of this build. <laughs> well, that's a positive thing, right? I mean, I mean, yeah, but technically it's a negative thing. <laughs> but dad jokes are. But uh, that's a good thing. I mean, with as much work as you guys have put in this car, we, you guys, um, a couple of loose terminals are, are, if that's all we come across, man. Yeah. That's still amazing, the, what, you, what you guys have accomplished. <coughs> I just wish we would have started filming this sooner so that you guys, people could have seen the real hard work. This is just the tedious stuff. The hard work was separating the body from the chassis and the engine and um, transmission and then, and then mating the new body to it excuse me, repairing the body with the donor car and that, so. Just want to make sure that... Uh, mass air flow sensors. You want to plug? They, we, we did not have them plugged in when, they, when we first started. We didn't have them plugged in when we first started, um, but we also didn't intend on starting at that time. Now, I know Steve was wiring it last week, so do you want to just check the mass air flows to see if they're in or if the, this side was wired? Because I think this was the side the hardness is damaged on. Yeah. Because um, that could also be something that was more diffused too. The wiring's been repaired. Okay, is the sensor in? No. Okay, but the wiring's repaired. Yeah. That's a good thing. All right, well, I think we got a lot of fuses. Yeah. What is that? That's what? Oh. The butt. Oh, the butt to the prop rod. Um, you want to do the honors or you want me to? You go ahead. You sure? Yeah, you haven't gotten to it. I haven't gotten to do it yet, have I? No, you have not. You got fuel. That's more bust into the Metallica. Give me fuel, give me fire. Ah! I want to use the glass key. I need to one to I might have fixed the ignition. Motor truth, here we go. Okay, everything's primed up. Don't let go, don't let go. Pump that gas. Oh, baby. Oh, baby.
<laughs> Try not to <coughs> die here. Die here. I'm a smoker, this is fine. <laughs> That's amazing that that, uh, that ran that long. So long as the cars ran. Obviously, you know, because of the smoke, um, the car's been, not been ran in about two years. Hook up the mass airflow sensors. That's going to uh, take care of all this excess fuel and smoke. And this is just awesome. We're going to accomplish a little more. So a couple of things, which direction do you want to go? Do you want to address the power steering pump issue? Um, power steering pump for some reason is not sitting straight. It's a new pump that we put on, so I'm not sure what's going on and it's causing the belt to throw off. So we've got that to address and we've got the brakes, brake pads and pull the wrap off the calipers and the rest of the wrap off the calipers and then the sensors and bleed the brakes. Which would you like to address first? Ooh, I think we need to bleed the brakes and yeah. get the brakes all dialed in, all that done so okay. we can have right? brakes, front of wheel alignment, so we can actually get it on the drive. Okay. And then we can start dealing with the power steering pump. I think we should do the brakes and then the power steering pump and then put it on the alignment rack because as soon as it's on the alignment rack, we can I want to drive it. So I know it's not all together, but I'm going to drive it. I don't care if there's no windshield in it. I'm yeah, going yeah, yeah. to drive it. So, uh, you said we got a mirror too? Yeah, I found a mirror. Uh, ironically, it's the same, uh, same company I bought the body from. Uh, and it's off the same car. Okay. So it's being mated back to itself. So that's kind of awesome. Where are we at on the windshield? Uh, we're about $3,500 away from that. Okay. So. About two car washes, the truck stop. <laughs> Throw your mankini on and get out there. Um, no, I just haven't ordered it. I wanted to make uh, other progress first. So. Yeah. But now, now we're at a point that I'm going to call them and say, let's, let's get it in. Because I've got to do uh, windshield on the SL63 before I sell it. And then uh, my wife's GLC300. I need to do a windshield on that. Um, so I'd rather have them just come out one time and uh, do all the glass. I get a better rate that way. Okay. Pull the cal you pull the calipers. I'll pull the wrap. Give them back to you. We're not doing rotors, correct? No, we're not. Oh, no. So no. we're not even pulling calipers. We're just pulling pins and putting... Well, we got to get the wrap off. Is it going to be easier to take them off the car and do it or do it on the car? I think doing it on the car is just as easy as doing it off the car because it's, it's hard lined in. So okay. it's not moving much. Okay. So once we get the pads out, we can have easier access to the rest okay. of the caliper. Well, go ahead and, do that, and I'll uh, I'll get you my heat gun. And... While Antonio's doing this, uh, one thing you'll notice is the difference in the brake calipers from the front to the rear. Um, the rears have this god awful yellowish green wrap on it. The whole car had that when we got it. It is just disgusting. Um, I just hadn't had the opportunity to peel the wrap off of all of the calipers yet because that is a very tedious, very boring task. So essentially when I did the front ones, it was just because I didn't want to sit there and do paperwork and file taxes. So I came out and chewed my fingers up doing the wrap off, but we'll take care of that today. So uh, for brake pads, there's a lot of different grades that you can go with, a lot of different companies and making the right choice for your car is very important. You don't want to have brake fade at high speeds if you're racing. You don't want to have uh, brake dust build up on the, on the wheels. So it's really important to choose what you go with. I went with a company called DFC, Dynamic Friction Company. They are a new company out of California. These are all American made products. Um, yes, I know it's a British car, but we make things better here. Uh, these pads are camfered edges and they're scorched. So basically they're pre-broken so you won't get any brake squeak out of them. Um, that's why I chose to go with these. I don't want brake dust, I want clean rims, um, but I also didn't want to spend a ton of money. These were a, a very affordable price versus, say, uh, the ATEs for my SL63. This car also has Brembo brakes, so they have a similar brake system set up. The ATEs, these are extremely expensive brake pads, and the reason I chose these for the Mercedes is because my Mercedes has the carbon ceramic brake rotors, which are stupid, stupid, stupid expensive. Um, and quite honestly, I don't know that I could afford to replace them if I wanted to. So uh, to protect those rotors, I went with the ATEs, but these DFCs will be great for daily driving for whoever owns a car.
Great. I think I want to wait to bleed the brakes until Steve's here. You guys do that together because like, I don't know the procedure and I was trying to look in the manual and I wasn't sure of some of the terminology. Okay. Um, so you guys can handle that. And it looks like put the wheels on it for now and then after we bleed the brakes, we can throw the inner wheel wells in the back and we're done with the back of the car. Yeah. And then, uh, so next week we'll do that and then we'll be ready to do the power steering pump. We don't want to run it too much until then. Yeah. Because we don't have any coolant cycling. Yeah. And then uh, just finish up the front and do work. We got a car. We got a car. Good job. Thanks for sticking with us. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. We will have more content for you. And let us know what you want to see on our channel. If you want to see different cars, different builds, if you want to see normal work around the shop, just let us know. Thank you very much.